Welcome to another quarter of Social Security on KNTV. This is a live call-in show and your calls and questions are important. So remember to call us throughout the show. So what happened over the summer? Well, Social Security announced new online service for replacement Social Security cards in Illinois as of August. So it's available through your My Social Security account. Social Security Administration introduced the expansion of online services for residents of Illinois available through its My Social Security portal at www.socialsecurity.gov slash my account. Nancy A. Berryhill, our Acting Commissioner of Social Security, announced the residents of Illinois can use the portal for many replacement Social Security number card requests. This will allow people to replace their Social Security number cards from the comfort of their home or office without the need to transfer, tra tra travel to a Social Security office. Applying online is an easy, convenient, and secure way to request a replacement card. To request a replacement card online, you must have a My Social Security account, a valid driver's license in a participating states or DC, and you do not need the card actually as long as you have your driver's license number, you'll be able to type that in. Be 18 or older and a United States citizen with a domestic U.S. mailing address. And you are not requesting a change to your name or anything else on your card. So no matter what state you live in, with a secure My Social Security account, you can also keep track of your earnings and verify them every year, get an estimate of your future benefits if you're still working, get a letter with proof of your benefits if you currently receive them, manage your benefits, change your address, start or change direct deposit, and get a replacement Medicare card. So remember, to secure your future, you need the best tools and information available. Our online services provide superior support and offer knowledge you won't get anywhere else. Visit My Social Security to empower yourself today at socialsecurity.gov slash my account. Hello, I'm Andrew Salata, Public Affairs Specialist for the Chicago Metropolitan Area, and we're going to talk about Social Security today. Today I have a technical expert guest from our Social Security office with me. So I'll let you introduce yourself to our Chicagoland audience. Thank you very much, Andy. My name is Philip Christie. I'm from the Chicago East Social Security office, and I'm a claim specialist uh, who uh, works with Title II uh, doing retirement and disability claims. So I'm here to answer your questions. And what we try and do is give you an opportunity to know what to expect before you visit our offices. So that way you may not have to make that trip out to, say, one of our Chicago offices. Because if you've visited there, you'll know it's a long way. The chairs are hard. And there's a quick and easy way to get a lot of things done. And one of the important things about Social Security is it touches all of us throughout our lives. It's not just a retirement program that we're familiar with, but it covers a lot of other things. So as we talk about the importance of Social Security to you, I want to remind you to give us a call at 312-738-1060 with any questions you may have about Social Security. You always do what we're talking about. We'll even be happy to jump off topic if you have a question about Social Security benefits that we haven't covered. But let's take a look at those Social Security benefits. So really, how is this an insurance policy or what's so important about Social Security? Well. Social Security is based is roughly based on uh, you know FICA coming out of your Social Security uh, or, or out of your normal earnings contributions. It's also called the Federal Insurance Contributions Act of Withholdings. They report earnings electronically, and your contributions uh, pr protect you from, from like an insurance policy for Social Security standards. All right, so. Uh, so we talked, to, or I mentioned retirement because that's what we always think about with Social Security. What are some other benefits that we could um, consider with uh, Social Security? Sure. Uh, one of the other benefits is disability. Disability could happen at any point in our lives. Research shows that one in four of today's 20-year-olds will become disabled before they retire. As a result, you may need to rely on Social Security's disability benefits for income support. Of course, as you probably looked at that slide, 
that Social Security amount of about $1,200 a month or, you know, a little over $12,000 a year isn't a lot. Mm -hmm. But when we can't prepare for disability, since we don't have it listed on our calendar mm -hmm. like a retirement date, exactly. Social Security is that great safety net. And it's also a safety net in other situations because we do have the numbers where one in four young workers may... Uh, become disabled before retirement age. So that's what some of those young workers are thinking, why am I getting these taxes taken out? Mm -hmm. But there's also something to consider for those young workers if they have a family, and how does Social Security protect, protect them if they have a family? Well, if young, <clears throat> if young workers have a family, um, if there are children, uh, they can receive a benefit up to age 18 uh, without any uh, problem and then they can uh, get benefits through high school up to age 19 and two months. After that, regardless of whether you're still in high school or not, your benefits would terminate. Um, and if you do go past high school to college, we don't pay benefits there. However, if you are found disabled beyond age 18 but before age 22, uh, you would be eligible for disabled child benefits ongoing on your parents' record. All right, so that's the one thing that we kind of think about. It's like if we have a family that we're taking care of and if we're working and we were to pass away, mm -hmm. well, that income is lost, and that's where Social Security is that big safety net and kind of helps things, helps things out. Right, absolutely. And it's one great way of thinking about it. What's, when you pay that FICA tax, you're paying that insurance premium for when you get to that age mm -hmm. or if some unfortunate occurrence happens in between. So what is a good way for someone to uh, think about if they're ready to file for Social Security benefits, uh, what would they do? Uh, is there two play, you know, how would they contact us? Well, you can always call our 1-800 number, 1-800-772-1213, or you can go on to uh, www.socialsecurity.gov, and you can um, also uh, find your local Social Security office by searching your zip code, and then it'll, it'll pop up the number for your local office. All right, so that's one of the great ways that field office locator. I actually get, like, uh, alerts coming to me because when I went on socialsecurity.gov, mm -hmm. I signed up for the, the newsletter, and then mm -hmm. I also get alerts. Right. So, like, today as I was going to uh, work, I, get, I checked my email before, and I'm like, oh, the, Chicago, the Waukegan office is closed in Illinois. And that's one way to find out if there's inclement weather, if your Social Security offices are closed. If you're going online, maybe you'll be able to take care of it online anyway and not have to take that trip out to uh, your office. Here in Chicago, it's not that bad. It, it's a bus ride away, or you can cross three uh, different offices on one bus route. So it's kind of easy to get there, but it's still a nice way to know before you head out. Right. And you bring up a really good point there. Uh, one thing that, you know, if something were to happen with a disaster or something like that, uh, our website would be very up to date with information on your local office. If, um, you know, a hurricane were to come, you know, maybe not necessarily in Chicago area, but a snowstorm, but, but a snowstorm or a blizzard, um, you know, we would keep everything up to date up to the up to the pretty much the minute whether your Social Security office is going to be open or closed for the day. So um, yeah. that is a good way to look up further information as far as that's concerned. Especially since now that we're in fall, that's just, what, uh, preseason to winter, as they say? Absolutely. So winter's coming soon, so that snow will be coming. So keep in mind, you know, as we talk about our Social Security benefits, uh, if you're listening in, watching us, and you have a question about uh, Social Security benefits or how they may um, apply in your situation, mm -hmm. give us a call at 312-738-1060. We can guide you, give you some information, let you know what to expect. Or if you just have a simple question, you can reach out to us. While we wait for you to call, let's, uh, let's go to that retirement part. Sure. Uh, that is, you know, what a lot of times most of our Social Security beneficiaries uh, receive retirement benefits. That's what, our, um, what we, we're in business for. And when it comes to retirement, the time when you choose to retire can make a difference. Absolutely. It makes uh, so, a big difference. So let's talk a little bit about that. We'll start with when's the earliest someone can retire and how's that age going to affect them? Sure. Uh, the earliest you can retire is age 62. At that point, uh, you would be taking a, a reduced benefit for age, but you get more checks. 
Um, so, you know, if you are having health issues and you want to retire earlier, you're like, I want to take my check now, this is the perfect opportunity for you because even though you're taking a little bit lower amount, you have all those years to make up the difference and you still get more checks over that time period um, that you'd be on retirement benefits. All right, and then so with the early rate, we see that reduction. You get those more checks. Right. But if someone were to wait for that full retirement age, uh, or what are the other options if you go full or, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. how does it go? So the next option would be to file at your full retirement age. If you file at your full retirement age, we'd be looking at uh, an unreduced benefit is what it is. Uh, full retirement age is changing. Uh, depending on what year you were born. Right now, people that are turning 62, born in 1955, their full retirement age is two, 66 and two months. Everybody before that, from 43 to 54 uh, day, year of birth, was at age 66. And slowly, as you look at this chart here, over the next five years, we're going to be changing all the way up to 67 as your full retirement age for 1960 plus. So, the date is changing, but the full retirement age amount will remain the same based on your top years of earnings that you paid into Social Security. So, And I know in, uh, in your office now, you're probably looking, since we're three months away from January, you're going to start getting those individuals that, have, that were born in 1956, yeah. turning 62 in 2018. Wow. And right. so they'll have that 66 in four months. So you may have, you know, you may hear a different full retirement age than your neighbor Mm -hmm. or a relative has and you might be wondering why and that's how it is now when i was looking at that chart that we had up sure we had uh your own retirement benefit then we had a spouse's column and how does so how does spouse's benefits relate to someone who's retired because we talked about the disability mm -hmm. and survivors if i were to pass away my surviving spouse could get something but what about if i'm still alive right so in a life claim for spousal benefits you're eligible for up to 50% of the worker's full retirement age amount at your full retirement age. So if, you're, if your spouse's full retirement age is age 66 and you're filing at 66, you'd get exactly 50% of their full amount. So, for example, throwing easy numbers out, if they were eligible for $1,000 a month, you'd be eligible for 500 now, if you were to take it at age 62, because that's the very earliest, you can file it, the rules are that they, one, will have to have filed, or, and two, you would be taking a reduced benefit for age as well. So you'd end up with probably about 35% of that amount filing at age 62 off your spouse's record. So that's one thing to take into consideration, but that is an option yeah. um, if your benefit that you have paid into Social Security is low enough. Yeah, so it, I guess one of the things is, as you brought up, if your benefit is lower. So mm -hmm. it's like we're talking about all these benefits, but really you only get one Social Security check That's or you only get paid one benefit. <laughs> and we're going to pick the higher, the better benefit. So if you worked and you can get your own retirement, you're not going to get a retirement benefit plus a spousal benefit right. unless your retirement's lower than that spousal. Absolutely. Right. And then we just add on to it to get it to because I think a lot of times when we talk about this and everyone starts thinking, oh, wow, I got married, I can get this and that, and then we think about all these extra checks, but it's really only one benefit, and we just pick that highest amount to get to. Yep. And I speaking agree. of highest amounts, mm -hmm. so we've talked about full retirement age. We talked about early retirement where it's a lower amount but more checks. Yeah. What is the other option? How long can we wait if we really want to decide on waiting a little later? Absolutely, yes. Uh, at the full... Uh, Sorry, you would be eligible for delayed retirement credits between your full retirement age and age 70 if you decide to wait. So this works like this. It's 8% annualized. Uh, so every year you wait, it's an extra 8% added to your, month, your monthly check all the way up until uh, age 70. So let's say your full retirement age is age 66. You basically get an extra 32% on top of your normal monthly benefit if you wait all the way till 70. Now don't wait too far after 70 because if you file uh, longer than six months after 70, you're doing yourself a disservice because we can only go six months retro with your retirement benefits filing at age, age 70 or anywhere past your full retirement age. So that's something else to take into consideration there. Now, I know probably half our audience out there is thinking, yeah, like I'm going to wait till age 70. I'm going to take it at <laughs> 62 and run with it. 
Uh, and that's an option that you can do. Uh, what you want to do is make sure you're comfortable with those numbers. Uh, know what to expect. And that's when we return back to that My Social Security account that we talked about at the beginning. It's great for replacing your Social Security card, but it also replaces that mailed statement that you may be waiting for and haven't received in a while. Mm -hmm. You can go online and get it anytime you, you need it by creating a My Social Security account. And when you look at those numbers, you're going to find what you're going to be most comfortable with. But also think about it. I always hear individuals say, well, you know, my neighbors always told me, take the money now. You never know how long you're going to be around for. But one in three 65-year-olds today are expected to live past age 90. And one in seven are expected to live past 95. So what we really want to do is take a look at our personal situation you can call your parents, see, you know, if they're still around, you can kind of get an idea on what that life expectancy may be for you as well and get in, go from there. Or if you have your doctor on speed dial, then maybe he'll know where you can fall on those odds. But finding that right number is going to be a decision that you can make on your own. And using the Social Security tools we have on our website can help you. And that My Social Security statement is one way to go. Agreed. And that's our commercial. Usually I play a commercial about our public service announcements, but since we had that at the beginning with um, our Social Security number replacements online, yeah. what we can do is, again, remind you to give us a call at 312-738-1060. We'll be happy to answer your calls throughout the program. Mm -hmm. So if you have a question, uh, make sure you can get to us. We have a shorter wait time than visiting our Social Security offices. but. <laughs> Let's think about some other parts about our Social Security. So let's return to what we were talking about with um, disability. Mm -hmm. When we were giving out those statistics about the possibility of being disabled or meeting uh, disability requirements before retirement. Mm -hmm. And uh, Social Security has two programs and it kind of gets individuals confused because, you know, say I'm getting SSI disability or I'm getting disability and we're Social Security and, they're, and it's kind of hard to understand. So let's talk about those two programs. Let's do that. Uh, so I'll let you explain the difference between them. Absolutely. So I get this question a lot. Um, what is the difference between SSDI and SSI? So, so SSDI stands for Social Security Disability. It's the money you work and pay into Social Security into the trust fund that counts for Social Security Disability. To be insured for Social Security Disability, you have to have 10 out of the last 20 years of work or 20 out of the last 40 quarters to be currently insured for disability. However, if you're a little bit younger, um, you know, if you're age 31 or less or age 24 or less, you could uh, have to work a little bit less. So uh, let's say you're working at, looking at age uh, 24 or less, if you're 24 um, and you are looking at filing for retirement, you only have to have a year and a half of work in. Or disability. Yeah, or in di sorry, into disability. You only have to have a year and a half of work in to be fully insured for disability at that point. Um, so that's just something to take into consideration. If you are a little bit younger, uh, the system does give you uh, some advantages with work because we know your work record is not nearly as high as somebody, you know, age 40 or 50 who's filing, filing for disability who's had a lot more time to work into the Social Security system, as far as that's concerned. And then the second program we have is called SSI. Now this is a program called, uh, SSI stands for Supplemental Security Income. It's a needs-based program. So this income is not paid into uh, by uh, you paying into Social Security benefits. This is uh, from the uh, a completely separate funding. Um, the SSI is an assistance-based program funded by revenue tax dollars that are um, require credits or certain amount, don't require credits or certain amount of work into Social Security, uh, but it does have needs-based criteria. So when you're looking at needs-based criteria, you're looking at your income and your resources. It has to be under certain limits to stay on the benefit. And the other thing with SSI is that you can um, be disabled as a child. Did you yes. know that? Yeah. Um, so, uh, with SSI uh, disabled child benefits, you could be eligible uh, for disability before age 18 because you haven't worked and paid into Social Security at all uh, for that benefit as well. Uh, but one thing to take into consideration with uh, any disabled child benefit is that uh, 
resources and income for parents uh, and resources and income coming to the household affect those disabled child benefits. So that is something to take into consideration, but that's kind of how that program works in general. And that's something to really think about or remember because when we talked about the benefits for family, we talked about children under 18 can get a benefit mm -hmm. or if they're still in high school, but that's if there's a parent that had either is retired, so if you started your family late mm -hmm. and you have young children, or if you were to become disabled, then you may have a young family, or if you pass away at a younger age, right. that works out. But if you have a special needs child, then um, Social Security, may, you may not meet the Social Security disability requirement because the child hasn't worked mm -hmm. at all or had an opportunity to. And mm -hmm. if you're still working and that met those other requirements, then SSI is that program to turn to. But with that parental income and resources qualification, a lot of times there might be some parents that are not eligible to get, or children are not eligible to get SSI because of parents' parental income. So one of the key things we always want you to remember is once your child turns 18, we'll look at the child as an adult now and look at the Absolutely. child's own mm -hmm. income and resources. So even though it's your kid and he's still in the household with you, we're going to look at the child independently. So a lot of times if you've had uh, filed for SSI for your special needs child and you didn't meet the qualifications because of income or resources, one remember to check back with us when um, your child turns 18 so we can take another look under different rules. That's correct, yeah, because you know when they're over 18, you know technically by law they are adults and they're on their own, so we need to uh, you know, reevaluate at that point under adults criteria, first of all, but second of all, uh, you know, they, when they're on their own, they're on their own resources and income. So it makes a big change um, in their eligibility requirements for SSI, as far as that's concerned. All right, so as we wrap up our show, uh, hopefully maybe next week you guys can uh, give us a call, but let's talk, uh, let's go back to that um, Social Security account. We talked about the Social Security account for, um, your uh, replacement Social Security card, and then also for that statement. Mm -hmm. But you know, what can what are some of the uses? I guess if you do create that account, what will it allow an individual to plan for? Well, it allows individuals to plan for retirement, disability, and family benefits. You can check your earnings, and this helps uh, our city employees and teachers because they the city employee. Can, may not pay into Social Security, but they may track their Medicare taxes and let them know what they can get uh, Medicare Part A free if they get the 40 quarters of credit required for that. So. All right, and then I know uh, one of the things is, as I was joking about this being the preseason to uh, winter, uh, as the temperature's getting colder, we're having those energy costs skyrocketing, and a lot of our visitors to our Social Security offices over the past month have been getting benefit statements mm -hmm. for energy assistance programs. And what is a great way to get a benefit statement? Well, to go onto your My Social Security account, of course. You can print them at home, or you can order one to be mailed to you right, yeah. from, right at your house. So that's the great thing about it. If you go onto your My Social Security account, you can print up that proof of income letter, that award letter that's required. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a printer connected, you just hit that button, radio button says, I do not have a working printer, and it will mail one out to you. So that's one of the great ways to save a trip, stay warm, mm -hmm. and then also get your needs going. So with that My Social Security account. So before we wrap up, I wanted to just remind you, if you did have a question and you couldn't reach us, please remember to call us at our Social Security Administration at 1-800-772-1213. And as I talk, I'm trying to get to the screen. There we go. So keep that number in mind because after you watch can, uh, cable access shows, you still got till 7 p.m. to take a look at uh, contacting Social Security if you have a question or need anything. And with that, we want to thank you for watching. Stay tuned for next week for another show. And uh, we appreciate your availability and we look forward to any of your future calls. So Social Security is with you through life's journey. We're securing today and tomorrow for you. So if you do have questions, please contact us at 1-800-772-1213.
1213, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you.